I mean, I don't know. This is what we can agree on. It's definitely some insane sort of mid-game fighting lineups. We're going to have a lot of action this game from OG and Secret. I mean, Fogs, what, are you sort of looking at a draft here and you feel that someone has got a better hold? Do you think OG's maybe gone a little too wild with their picks Your this game? Prepare for battle. New life will make its home amongst your bones. New life will make its home amongst your bones. You will be forever alone. Was that intentional? It looked intentional. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Thirty seconds to battle. And is Seb gonna follow, or will Seb sort of say, "You know what? I'm happy playing a one v one lane against Zyzlesh as well." Could see a bit of musical lanes going on, yeah. No. Well, we'll see on the runes. The attempt there to, to get in as he jumps back with the swashbuckle. And yeah, for now, Matumba, he's, he's, even though they've seen what's going on, yeah, Matu's going to stay down here. And Seb's standing with the blocks up top. So it looks like OG are going to keep the lane matchups as they are. Uh, excited to see what goes on in the mid lane, of course. Quinn stepping in today, playing uh, some Void Spirit in the mid. Uh, but he is going to be against the Nisha Kunker, of course. For this one of those heroes that you can expect Nisha to hit insane levels of GPM on. Well, it will be interesting to see sort of how the the pace of these two mid heroes plays out against each other. Of course, Nisha more focused on. Clearing the stacks early on and getting that boost in farm, whereas Quinn, he's he's going to be zip-zapping over the map. If he sees an opportunity to make a play on the side lane, he'll be there to join OG and make sure that they can get the kill done. Don't be mad. <laughs> Both teams totally on the ball with trying to outdo each other in those small little maneuvers. And on this bottom lane, I mean, I would imagine you know, you're playing this jug into the gyro. Ooh. Oh, he's getting aggressive onto Zai, but Yapso's there to start training back. Zai with the salve at the ready. Sax is going to be able to come in and cancel that Sal, so Zai will be kept low. Still has three tangos and a few branches good to go, so Zai will, will be all right, but a bit of a nuisance nonetheless, as Seb himself will be able to salve back up to full HP. Seeing the CS in the mid lane, 11 for 3, 10 for 3. Keeping it close. Quint and Nisha trading nicely. Sure, Nisha's got that little slight edge on the right click, but you do have that very nice attack animation of and, of course, the, the resonant pulse as the Void Spirit to easily secure yourself, CS. Oh, no, for sure. Yeah. No, yeah, in terms of sort of the, the way you're managing your regen, yeah, Quinn's going to have his, his work cut out in terms of those early expenditures for the extra bit of sales and such getting out to him. Yeah, so it's sort of, yeah, Samael and Matu are going to be happy. They're both getting solo XP down here with the supports messing around elsewhere. This is our... Yeah. yeah. Pop 
Poppy does head back over towards the tier one with that TP there. Did get a little low to the harass of No-Tail. No-Tail be able to head straight back over, instantly take out the sentry. Can maintain control around this warding area. Looking at the top lane, CS, what are we seeing? Zai uh, is definitely struggling a little bit against Seb. Seb with those treants able to have the edge in the last hit. 17 for 8 against Zai's 9 for 2. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hard and see. Ah, uh, uh, they're gonna get some few right clicks in on him. A uh, couple more. Ooh, he's able to get away. That Fisher from Yapsil does hold back the two of them, making sure that Sai is able to get away. We're popping the south. That is his last bit of regen, though. Uh, see, I know I said that he, the courier's coming out. He's got his full wand, and he has taken himself out another set of tangos. So, making sure that he can stay in the area, but he still he he really is struggling to find the farm because of this pressure from OG. Yeah. Well, that was the last bit of burst that Sax was able to offer. As, uh, okay, no, j just manages to get a clarity out, so soon we'll be able to keep harassing Zai. Oh, yeah. Radiance Middle Tower is yeah, under just there, got the two braces into the face. Nice. Oh, that swashbuckle. He's got that. I don't think they're going to get him. Seb will be able to, though. This TPN should secure themselves the kill, or should it? Maybe the TP off the mark wasn't quite close enough to get a hit, and Yapsil's going to be able to stay out of range of Seb. And now Seb, he's going to turn and sprout back Zai. There's Yapsil. He's coming back forth. No mana quite yet for the Fisher, but he is claritying up. He's going to have mana for the Fisher soon. Seb's got to be careful. He's sitting low, out of regen. There's the Fisher setup as the clarity was enough to get that Fisher ready to go. Seb's trying to move in, but another slam down. They get the kill. First blood for Zai. They do lose Yapsor. But Zaxa gets low, Zai. Not quite anything else other than a few right clicks to offer, and those right clicks will not be enough. Saxa will live. But for all the tough start that Zai has had, he gets a bit of a break there, being able to find first blood thanks to Yapsil. Yeah, very hard for Nisha to really do too much about stopping this Void Spirit getting the runes each time, unless he's getting sort of support help coming in. But as we've seen, you know, secret supports, Yapsor and Puppy have been needed on these side lanes. Yapsor coming back into the game, he's going to start and make the move down bottom, maybe see if he can do something to Samael before Samael hits the six and is too ready to take team fights himself. Fisher. Yeah, this should, this should be a solid one here for Secret. Unless Samael, has he got any one charges? It's only the one one charge. That will not save him. The Verifier might, though. No. Just kidding. Matu able to find that crit to finish off the job. Saxon does come in with a rotation. Lucky shot. Slows down Matumba Man, but Matumba Man still has Yaps on Puppy by his side. They'll stop No Tail and Saxon from pursuing. And Matumba Man will be able to live. Nice movement from Yapsaws to come back in and see an opportunity to make that sort of play down bottom and ensure that Matu gets that bit of a leg up against Samael's Gyra. Yeah. Quinn. He's starting the action going already. These movements, these are what they've got to watch out for. Secret Quinn's going to be all up and down the map. You know, mid lane, playing around here. You're not going to outfarm the Kunkka. You're very unlikely to be able to kill Nisha's Kunkka as well. Level 8, double braces. You know, this is not the target. Quinn's going to be ducking and diving out of the side lanes. Yapsor going down there as Samael and Notel can now turn towards Matu. Matu does have the Blade Fury, so too hard for them to go for too much of an aggressive play. And mid lane Zai has come across. We'll see what they can go for here as Nisha's trying to chase down Saxa. X Mark's already been used, so no further control to try and make a grab for him. Zai really wants to find something here with Nisha. Well, they have Zai's out of there. That's going to give Seb this free reign to put pressure onto this tier one. Yapsil's going to start moving up, maybe 
you know, just sort of training around, giving some priority to Yapsaw to, to help him start getting levels towards his six. And ultimately, of course, the blink dagger that he's going to want to find this game as the shaker. Zai. The movement pays off. He's able to walk in, get the stun in on to so Tower. Now Samael's trying to turn in out of the corner and it's going to hit on all three of them. Nisha's there as well. That's the secret. Zai's getting low. They've lost Zai. Over towards Samael they go. Nisha and Matthew, if they've got the damage, get him off. They've hit him once more with the Tidebringer. Nisha chases him down, finishes him off. They'll take down the big boy. Samael's out of the game. Nisha. He's got a lot of HP still to work with. He's a tanky boy, 800 HP and 181 charges, but Quinn, he's got the control. Zips in, finds the Ether Remnant. The healing ward is still healing up Nisha. Matsu trying his best with a micro to keep his Kunkka safe, but it's not enough. Quinn will be able to bring him down, mirroring his movement and taking out the Kunkka. <laughs> and in mid, the action just continues. Pup Puppy was able to bring in Matsu straight into the front of the freight, and a quick Blade Fury will take no tail out. Now Secret can put pressure onto this tier one mid. Samael's moved up to the top half of the map. He knows this is the safe area. No Seb sort of gave him the go ahead. He said, hey, my friend, go top. There's nobody here contesting farm. You'll get a lot of space. Secret are gonna try and do something about this though, potentially. Zai's headed over, but Saxer and Quinn are there ready to shut him off. He'll turn, does get the stun and the kill onto Saxer. Zai's able to bring down one with him. He should still fall as Quinn will chase. He's got the Ether Remnant up in a second. Doesn't even need it. One more right click takes down the Lesh. Right. Radiance middle tower. Yes. Yeah, I didn't know. No, you're right. Yeah, the, no one picked it up at top. Oh yeah. Sax is going to... No, no. Take that as tribute. Yeah, Quinn is very strong right now here. Level 9 with the phase boots. Every time he's got those two charges of the Astral Step to go, it's an insane amount of burst. In fact, Yapso, he's already leaving the area. Radiance he's got a TP down bottom. Look to head forward with Zai. A, a Fisher into a split off could set up for some action, but nobody on OG's here at the moment. So Secret will be able to pressure in onto Radiance this Tier 1 tower. No tail... Attack is around but he's not going to want to come anywhere close to this one as they are going to have to let this one go by the looks of it OG no intention of trying to fight secret down here at this point Dyer's top tower is under attack Radiant's bottom tower has fallen Radiant's middle tower is under attack Both teams, I mean, as mentioned by the panel during the draft, they've both got these these great ways of, of getting these early pushes going. Down bottom, Zai. Well, he should be in trouble. Saxa is able to roll in. There's no escape for him. An attempt from Yapsor to buy him some space to get out of there. But now Yapsor's in trouble as well. Quinn's on top of then Seb comes in with the TP. Jump forward with a step. He's stuck in the sprout. It's going to be two kills for OG as Yapsor goes down. Nisha, he's trying to find something in return. Looks towards Saxa. Saxa does get dragged back into the torrent, but he's still alive. He is dying to the satellite banisher and will finally fall. But now Nisha, he's got to deal with the three of them. He's going to go straight up for the TP out and there's no way to cancel it. So Nisha will be able to take Saxa's life and get out of there alive. And it's all over towards Puppy. Samael's, there's been time for him to join the action. Head in, Puppy pops the hand of God. Remnant pulls him back, Quinn's able to grab another. Quinn playing a lovely clean game right now. Five kills on the Void Spirit. The action, he's bringing it. 12 minutes in and it, it, we're seeing both teams just dancing around one another. Everybody is getting involved right now. Yeah, Omni Slash, but yeah. Yeah. 
And, and you know, they're, these are heroes with these long ults that aren't saying, oh, I can't fight unless I have my ultimate. You know, they're, they're, they're heroes that offer so much more than just the ult. Top lane, Seb. He'll pop out of Nature's Wrath, but the three heroes on top of him. Seb is getting low. The Omnistash bounces don't get him, but Matu's final right click will. So has managed to get time for the rest of OG to come in and try and find some trades. Quinn jumps over towards Zai, cuts him out. Now they'll look over towards Matu, but Matu's already seeping away in the trees. He's out of this half of the map. Does not want to mess around with the rest of OG's forces. He really is. Honestly, this Void Spirit performance, it's been smooth. He's hit the 10 as well. You get that lovely uh, bit of a boost to your power out with uh, with the plus 20 damage. Of course, not quite what it was before the Talent Nurse, but still. You know, this hero hurts, and he's going for, the, you know, one of my favorite builds as well. It's getting the Blade Mail on any sort of in playmaking mid. It's just so value. This item is perfect. Yeah. No, not at all. No. Yeah. I mean, but that's the thing. That that's gonna happen. You you play any sort of hero. These mids, like a Kunker or a Magnus, they should have that sort of level of advantage because they are utilizing the neutrals in a way that you just cannot compete with. Uh, obviously, the the power that you have, despite having the the, the lower sort of XP gain early on that is it's just this ability to shut down the side lanes, make sure that despite the Kunker getting the free farm, other heroes on the map are struggling. Yapsol gets taken out as top lane side. He's going to go for Saxon and will get it. Another tr trade over the map globally. Action happening and back down bottom. It just doesn't stop. Combo there from Nisha with the X Mark boat. Blows up. No tail, but the space was there for OG to take that tier 1 tower bottom whilst that all went down, so... Honestly, just constant action between these sides. No. Oh. Quinn, the fun don't stop. He's in with an Astral over towards Zai. Quinn's going to stay on top of this ledge. Zai low on the mana. Quinn's going to have a remnant in a second if he wants to commit for this. But there is Yapsa on the side, dealing with the Hellbear Smasher. Matu's going to move over. OG have to be a little wary. Oh, Matu having the Omni Slash. Good to go. Quinn bottling up. He's back to full HP and a decent amount of mana. Matu turns. He's got the Omni Slash available. Blade Fury there to make sure he doesn't get pulled in by the remnant. To find the fish connection with the remnant. He actually was able to grab Zai instead. Zai stepped in range of it. And for that, it costs him his life. OG are able to find the kill, take another tier 1 tower. And this engagement, we've seen some equal trades. They'll definitely be the ones that, that come out on top there, finding a, a big kill onto the core and continuing to take this all-important tower away from Secret in that middle lane. Gonna try and dance around with Matu. Matu, of course, does have the Omni Slash. Lay Mel going to be popped to deter Matu from trying to commit. Quinn's gonna be a little careful because Nisha does have good control. Quinn's still playing around with the remainder of that haste rune. And that will put off Nisha trying to set up the boat combo because of the speed that Quinn has. Oh wait, what? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's a, a very nice Aghanim's timing on the on the gyro. And what else are we seeing? Seb after the hood, going for that standard orchid that we're seeing the Prophets build right now. The Secret are going to head up here. They want to try and make a bit of a go on to Seb. This is a five-man gank attempt here from Secret. They're bringing the whole squad in to go for Seb. And they will block him off with the fish. Yeah, everyone's going to come in on OG as well for this. Seb does fall. Now, do OG want to try and fight into this? They're a man down. Saxa has got the Rolling Thunder available. They'll try and bring the fight back towards their Tier 1. Quinn still smoked up. See if he finds an avenue to initiate with Secret. 
stepping forwards. Quinn hiding behind the tree. He'll lead him with the remnant. Instantly grabs inside. They'll commit onto the left right. Rolling Thunder coming through. The opponent does come crashing down. So the run will give them some sort of protection. It's not enough to save this ledge. On the sash from Matsu comes down onto Samel. It's not enough damage though. Matsu couldn't finish off the kill. And now it's Quinn. He's back in. He takes down the jug. Nisha, he's tanking down here. The impetus is as well for no tail flying through. They've lost two on secret. Nisha's going to go for the TP out. He will make it away. Nothing to cancel it. But now Yaps are on Puppy. The supports, they've been left alone. Remnants out. Won't grab either of them. Puppy tries to hide in the trees. Close his eyes and hope that this ain't happening. And that will allow him to get out. Not to, not the same to be said for Yaps, although he does die. OG able to get revenge for their fallen leader, Seb, as they take down three and they'll move immediately into the Roshan pit. Bottom tower is under attack. Radiant Radiant and a very, very quick row ship. That Breath of Nature bonus damage certainly helping out there. Seb had a, a lovely plus 45 to help bring down the old beast. So quick Roshan timing here, 19 minutes in, and now OG with this 3k lead. The the pressure now on secret to to not make those sort of calls i mean it was it was always a very ambitious play there anytime you sort of see five heroes running at one hero at the pre-20 minute mark it's you know if, if that doesn't pay off that's a lot of resources and a lot of time down the drain again. They do. Tried to TP out, but Nisha was already in with the X mark. And this time around, I don't think OG's going to be able to find anything for losing Seb. Seb's going to go down. OG. Died. Okay, they do get Zai down bottom, so a trade of the offlaners. Of course, though, Seb, definitely the target worth a, uh, a little bit more. He's sitting at, at the moment over double the net worth of Zai's less rack this game. Samel's so TP'd into this, but Matu, he's got the, he's level 13, he's got the level 2 Omni Slash. Samel's so gonna go down the once with the Aegis. Can they kill him a second time? He he committed for this. And OG, they're unable to connect with him. Samel's so gonna get left alone as he TP's into his death, and now it's Secret's turn to maybe look for some objectives themselves. With the, with the gyro down, they can push on for a tier 2 tower here. Radiant structures are fortified. That was so. I, I think it's got to be miscommunication. Yeah, I think, you know, Samel obviously went with the intention of having backup for, for that second life, obviously feeling strong because he had the Aegis. The problem being, no one else in OG was actually ready to come and join forces with him. So Samel loses the Aegis, loses his life, loses a tier two, and that little lead that OG was starting to get has been shut back down. Daxa. We'll try and find Puppy here on the back of Secret's Retreat. And should get him. Another bounce over the Rolling Thunder. They do find the chair. And also, Seb's managed to get a hold on to Matu with his Orchid. And to the Remnant, blocking off any sort of escape. They get the kill. We're seeing back and forth action just as you feel that one team's managed to sort of get the advantage. Suddenly, the other side comes in and say, no, we can do it too. And they're able to catch back up. And honestly, uh, Quinn, I love this, man. This is, this is the build. This is absolutely the build. Blade Mail into Aghanims. Blade Mail is the most efficient, effective item on this hero if you can get it early. And then the Aghanims. I see some Void Spirits building Orchid. No, you don't do that. You get Axe. It's giving you two, two charges of this insane AoE silence. And, and obviously the damage, once you have the talent, it's, it's an insane amount of bursts. And of course, just the tank ability as well. You're hitting all these heroes. You're going to take a, uh, a lot of e extra physical damage to bring down. So Quinn, Quinn's on top of it today. I, I mean, I just see so many, I see so many Void Spirits not buying it. And uh, honestly, I, I don't know, I don't understand it. They're, they're, but Quinn, he knows. Quinn knows what to do. And it's showing. Look at this man's Void Spirit performance so far. He's 904. Quinn has, has certainly stepped into a, a position where pressure's on, right? You know, standing in for OG, there's high expectations. And, uh, you know, 22 minutes into this game, Quinn has surpassed them. He's, he's off to a very solid beginning. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, and I, oh it is. Oh, it is. It's, you know, we, we saw just there, you know, 
Uh, yeah, sure, they lost, like, Matu off the back of it, but, you know, Matu, his farm's still... You know, he, he's still playing a bit of the catch-up game, but he has got that big item that he was trying to get done done. The, the Deso is there, so if he finds a situation where he's able to commit on a target with the Omni and the Mask of Man is popped, he, he will kill them. Problem is, in this sort of a game, as we've seen, Sure, Samael up top of that tier one did get caught out alone, but that you know that very much was a mistake. For the most part, OG's not going to be in positions where they have one hero out alone, other than Seb, really, right? Seb's going to be working on the side lanes, but the rest of the team, they're going to be sticking together as four. Nisha, very close to having that BKB done, so obviously with that, he will be able to just sort of charge into these fights. No real threat to him, you know, they're not going to be bringing down a, a BKB Halberd, a Kunker, level 18 at, at this point of the game, but it's just really a question if he's going to have enough damage to, to get rid of some of OG's cores before they turn around and kill the rest of his team. Samael, yeah, he's using BKB and Agonims. He himself can stand his ground. Obviously, that Vampire Fang is definitely helping out as well with that. That Ag's giving him that additional life steal that makes him even tougher to bring. Sep. He is the one that has to play alone as the Prophet. And he'll uh, lose his life for it, you would imagine, unless they can make any sort of miraculous connection. They cannot. Seb is alone. OG are starting to move up. Maybe they can take a fight after Seb falls. Quinn's going to lead him with the Invis rune. See what sort of a grab he can find in the river. Zai, he's already on top of Nota, so he's forcing the edge back. The cooldown does come out, hitting the ball. The missile onto Matuba Man. Matuba Man, he's getting low. Can he get the blade through in the overdrive? Tiny can, because Japsel's in with the echo. Buys time for Matu to pop the Omni side, but it isn't enough damage to kill us. Samaya, finally, the Tidebringer hit from Nisha will clip the gyro, take down Samaya. Mail. It's been two buybacks from OG. They're trying to turn this. They're looking for Seb, but Seb, he's in trouble. He's going to go down a second time. It's a dieback on Seb. It's a triple kill for Nisha. This level 20 Kunkka just turning up big time into the fight. They'll bring back Nota. That's a double dieback from OG here at 25 minutes. As Nisha, honestly, he just turns up and he says, Look, boys, I got a lot of farm. I got a lot of levels. They can't do anything about me. I mean, and they couldn't. He just waltzed in, throwed out all his spells a couple of times, a few Tidebringer hits, and suddenly he had cores dying on the back lines. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Yeah. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Can indeed Nisha just going to, to continue to just sort of speed farm these these huge giants that will help his team massively. The AC queued up next. Of course, as the Kunkka. He gets a good time on that, and it's going to be very hard for, for OG to get many kills at all in a full 5v5. This Kunkka is just so far ahead uh, of anybody else in the game, because, you know, it, it's Nisha, it, it's a Kunkka. It's a really sort of a match made in heaven. You see it on Nisha Kunkka, you see it on Nisha Magnus. He just has this these sort of games where he's just a, a million steps ahead of anyone else in farm. Yeah. I mean, they really, honestly, Kunkka's talents were that good that these these talents still, even with the nerfs, are... I feel that they're, they're, they're one of the best value talents. The, the damage and the strength, it just adds up to insane proportions. Mid lane, jumping onto Puffy behind the tower. But Nisha's got the control onto Notel. Notel gets slow. Nisha pops the BKB, but he won't be able to finish off Notel. Notel just out of range of that Tidebringer cleave. They'll turn their attention over towards Saxis. Sax are able to break out of the Yules combo. Quinn pops the Blade Mount, turns with the Remnant onto Zai. Jump over with the Rolling Thunder. Zai, who'll get left behind by the rest of Secret. It's a double kill for Quinn. The rest of Secret splitting up. See what OG's play is going to be off the back of taking those two. They have got the wave pushing in mid. Nisha's there, still very much a target that they do want to ignore. They cannot do anything about the Kunkka right now. They cannot kill him. You just have to hope he sort of leaves them alone. And he will back off Nisha. They'll step away from this, and OG will manage to find that tier 2 tower. Ooh. 
top lane. Seb's been found. Nisha is hunted him down once again, blocking him off. Allowing Matu to get in with that Omni Slash. It's another death on Seb. Secret really... Yeah, I mean... It's... A secret has just been sort of... That's been the focus for them, it seems. Anytime that Seb shows, you're seeing sort of three, four heroes make a beeline immediately for the Prophet to take him out. They're not letting Seb get away with any of these solo pushing plays. And they've got vision on Quinn. Quinn was hopping around. They have vision on him with that sentry. And Quinn gets slammed down. They're now buying back on Quinn as well. He wants to get involved. See if he can turn this fight around. Samel moves in with the BKB, but Secret's able to back off. They turn over towards Zai. Missile inbound onto the Lashrak. Can Secret save and Zai's able to use up? Now Samel, he's vulnerable. The torrent control's there for Nisha. Double kill for Matu. OG's got to get out of it. Saxa jumps up to the high ground with the shield crash. No Tails being chased as well by Puppy and the Shisentor. Zai Lesh does fall as Quinn's able to come back in with Saxa. Slice him down. Can OG actually fight back into secret? They're without their gyrocopter. Matu's got Blade Fury and still has the Satanic outfit to rely on. Puppy's just going to catch the TP out in the middle of the fry, and he's going to get away with it. He's out of this. Matu turns over towards Saxa. Saxa jumps in. Silence does hit onto Matu, but he's able to heal up with that Satanic. Take down Saxa. Aether Remnant does pull in Nisha, but Nisha's just too tanky. They cannot touch this Conquer. No Tail has to TP out. We're seeing buybacks being used all over the place here. That last buyback coming in from Saxa, but unfortunately for him, the fight does come to an end. Secret, they back out. They, they sort of take away the advantage that they've built up now. As Secret sit at a 5k gold lead. Both Matu and Nisha at the top. And you know, sure, Nisha's been at the top all game, but Matu, he did have his struggles. He was behind, but right now, he's caught straight back up. He's at the top. Amazing what you'll find laying around. Regeneration! Yeah. Uh, they, they... They're so tanky. And Nisha, that, that's the AC done. 30 minutes in, we're seeing this BKB armlet, Halberd, AC. No, Nisha, he's got it all. Uh, 30 minutes in. Secret are very much able to just run down a lane now. Uh, and as sort of a five man, it's going to be so hard for OG to deal with. You know, Quinn's game, it's only going to get harder and harder. Sure, you know, this hero, we've seen how much he can do in like the, the first 20, 25 minutes. Down. But essentially, you know, your damage output, it, 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 there is a cap, right? You know, you, you're you not going to scale that well in terms of offensive capabilities. Sure, you're always going to be able to jump around the fights. But against these heroes like the Kunko, who's sitting on 3,300 HP, it's just very hard for Quinn to offer much in bringing these sort of heroes down. Nisha. It's going to try and poke out a reaction here from Samael. Quinn's going to be in to jump on to Nisha, break up the, the chance of a following combo, so Samael won't feel forced to pop the BKB. Right, so, yeah. But, I mean, well, you know what he... he you know what he's going for already. I mean, this BKB Satanic, it's, it says Rapier. You know, there's no other way to play this game for Samael. He's already looking for it, and that's exactly what they have to do. They, they need that Satanic Rapier Gyro. That is how OG have a good solid chance of taking these fights. Because as it is, Secret, feeling powerful, stepping into Roshan. See if OG do want to try and fight this around the pit. But it is going to be hard, as we say. The damage issues are certainly there against Secret's lineup. Secret's heroes just so beefy, thanks to Nisha's farm. And they'll be able to take this without OG getting a look in at all. Aegis grab, and the G's going the way of Nisha. So now you've got to try and somehow get through this Kunkas 3300 HP health pool twice. You know, sitting on that very nice 20 armor. Oh, yeah, he's got the. Oh, my goodness. Let's do, you've got to do the maths here. So. Play. I, I think so. You know, it's only a 10 second cooldown. I, you're not bursting this man in 10 seconds. Yep. Oh my goodness, it is.
Yeah, these these cores of OG are just looking that little bit more solid until until that rapier comes. On oh, no, that for me, that is what OG is playing towards now. They're playing towards Satanic Rapier. Before that, they've just got to try and hold on, make sure Samael's got space to farm up these key items. They're not in a fighting shape to, to sort of tackle Secret in a 5v5. Secret are now 10k ahead. They have this Aegis and Cheese. OG just cannot fight them at the moment. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Sub's going to pop the BKB. Now he needs to run. And yeah, BKB TP out. They've got no answer at the moment through that magic immunity. So Seb will be able to play safe. But this is, yeah, this is exactly what OG do. Just play on the map. Keep Secret sort of focused away from actually getting a, a further push onto one of these tier twos, getting, you know, going again with the Aegis and Cheese and just try and buy as much time as you can to, to stretch this game on for the Samael Gyro. You know, Samael Gyro, he's, he's, he's won these sort of games before and you know, there it is, no surprises, he does now queue it up as he comes close to finishing that Satanic. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Yep. I mean, I mean, I mean, OG, honestly, like, with the fact that they get the Aegis and the Cheese in Secret aren't yet able, this, you know, been, what, like a minute or so since they picked it up to actually get anything going because of the fact that OG are pushing out the lane so well. I think that that only bodes well, and I, I think this very much is going to be a game where we will see Samael get that Rapier done before this is over, whichever way it falls. I amplify my impact. See top lane. Zai. And it's been found, you know, Secret, they're, they're playing a little split up. Zai, a little full. Is there a reason why Secret aren't necessarily going for a five-man down a lane with the Sages and Cheese? You off your feet, huh? Yeah. No, I mean, and I guess it works if you sort of just look at the cores that OG's working with, right? You both this Void Spirit, uh, because of his innate abilities, you know, he, so Quinn can push out of lane, and he's very tricky to control, right? He's jumping all over the shop. And, and obviously with Seb, with his BKB TP, he can always escape if Secret do make a move onto him. Top lane, Matu, tried to move very ag aggressively up towards the tier threes. A Sprout will be cut through. Does still have the healing ward available, and Puppy and Yapso are by his side. So it won't chase on. Samael did return to join the rest of them here. As, I'll have a bit of a poke at Secret around this tier 2, but of course with the Death Zone, the Butterfly now complete on Matu. He takes down the tower in a matter of seconds. So Secret will continue to take a further objective. Seb straight down, back out on the map on the bottom lane, keeping at least one of the waves pushed away from the base to, to make sure it is that little bit harder for Secret to get a push high ground going. Haste. to the impurities. They might catch him this time, obviously the the one he's got to worry about is that X mark. Bishop into the torrent. He's not going to get the chance to pop a single spell. Secret have the lockdown to shut down the Void Spirit. His split pushing attempt. Bottom. The time this relic has been found. Samael does have to back, you know, go back for it, which does mean that Secret catch vision of him. They'll now go for an attempt. He has still got the BKB and TP's available in a second, so he can go for the BKB TP out. And he will do that indeed. Just no messing around. Wants to get out, and he will get home safely. Samael. Yeah, I think I think we need some sort of you know invoker on the other side with a refresher cataclysm for that to be a chance. Now smells okay. Rapier status 1600 towards it. You know it's it. I think it's gonna be there. I, if anything to you know the last few minutes to go by, I think OG's gonna have time to get this rapier on Smell. We'll see what Secret has to say about that though. As Matu is pushing onto the tier three. 
Radiant See the Rolling Thunder being played with by Saxa. He's ready to jump in with that blink. Uh, if he wants to start slowing him from sieging this tier 3 tower. And he's just standing his ground, pushing on some out attempts to step forward. The X Mark is there. He's set forward to make the he, he didn't have the BKB back up. It's still down for 15 seconds. Samel, he stepped far too far forward. He stepped for 80. And that is, that's a big error right there. Because now Secret have all the space and time to take away this mid set of racks. And I mean, they could go for more. There's no reason not to. They know how strong they are. Even with Samel in the game, they didn't have much to fear without Samel. There's nothing at all that's going to stop Secret from taking these objectives. As no tell, they'll commit onto him. He has got the Ghost Scepter in the heels, providing him some safety. Secret, and they will be a little wary of Quinn coming back in the game on his Void Spirit. But the Tier 3 is gone. Secret, they're able to take more. And Anisha, he is, he's still hanging around. Radiance top bags. Yeah. Radiance top bags has fallen. He just finds himself for three man slam! Alright, no tails out of the game, buys back, it's still 25 seconds without the gyro. Secret now to 20k lead. That little bit of mispositioning from Samel costing OG heavily. A secret clean up a huge amount of the base. Matsu does get gone upon. Do they have enough control for him? They don't. He's able to get the Blade Fury out. Hand of God. Pots as well as Matsu is able to move and move outside of the base. Back down towards the low ground. There's no damage still to deal with Nisha's Kunker as he walks out full HP. Try and jump in. They're going for a bit of a poke onto him, but I don't think there'll be anything more. Do they really want to try and chase this Kunker? I don't think you can kill this man. Seb tries to turn his attention over towards the Shaker with the silence, but he's able to force his way out of there. The missile does connect onto Nisha. Nisha has been left behind, but he's still got the BKB, and he still has his TP. Nothing to stop that through the magic immunity. Nisha is out. Saxon did try and commit to find something. Seb's coming in with the TP to look for Zai. They may just get Zai though. Quinn's got the remnant. Back up in a second. Zai's trying to duke it out, but he won't be able to. OG at least able to find something. But they still need a whole lot more than that to come in, come back into this game. A buyback from Zai, in fact, coming into play as no -tails playing aggressively up by the outpost into three members of Secret. Ah, it's going to be a dead enchantress for sure. No more fight to be had there. And Samel goes down once more. Matu with the Omni Slash backup. Yapso has the control. And with Samel dying a second time like that, this game, I think, is getting pretty close to being over. Fog. This looks like Secret should be able to clean this one up. should be the Megas for sure and very likely to be the game unless OG can do something insane Sax is trying to clear out mid 7 CC and C heading the way up top yeah oh my goodness yeah they hit that hard they hit that fast right now Matsu Abyssal out Mega Creeps are there OG you know they're not a team to give up they will hold on and they'll go for one more fight you know, if somehow Samael is able to farm that final 3,500 gold and get the rapier, maybe there's a chance to turn it. I mean, we saw the series yesterday, right? We saw some incredible turnarounds. Not necessarily a turnaround against the Megas, though, and against a team that is 20k ahead and with some very, very good scaling heroes. Matsu, 25, getting close to being six slotted. They'll take this Roche. Aegis Chief Refresher Shard goes their way. Secret. Well, they have got everything required for that one final team fight they need to look for to shut this game one out. <laughs> yeah. A tithe to the impurities. Pull roots and run. Yeah, no, both Matsu and Nisha just played their carry roles to perfection this game. 
Jump him onto Seb. Leads in for the Torrent. Fisher's follow up is there. Seb will go down. He does have buyback. Will use it. Saxa caught outside of the base. As the pan goes dead, another buyback is available. Saxa will use it immediately. No out trying to sail over the Ghost Scepter. But they've got the match with damage to burst through. Samel steps forward. He takes a full Omni slash to the face. As the old man is in his helicopter, is out of the game for 80. They don't have buybacks on these two heroes. Secret should be able to clean up the rest. Seb sprouts himself in. Nisha cuts him down. You can expect the Gs to start coming out pretty soon. They're heading on to tier four. Secret looks like OG's going to make them work for it, make them take down the buildings before they tap out. Quinn's dead. He's got a buyback available. He's going to use it. I mean, OG, they are trying their best to hold on. But this game is absolutely over. There's no comeback to be had here. Secret will take game one of this series and very, very cleanly sort of from the mid-game onwards as well. Nisha sort of just waltzes in with the classic, you know, I finished farming, what do I do? And he just takes away the whole game with him. Matt